Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Josephine Ko here and I'm a Bolsendorfer concept pianist and theorist. Today, I continue to discuss one other Bach's Prelude and Fugue from the Well Tempered Clavier, Book 1. This is number 16 in G minor. This prelude opens with a trill in the right hand and a tonic pedal point of G in the left hand. Some pianists or some of you may prefer to take it at a slower pace. The trill sounds much like a flute and it imitates actually a bird call, although Bach's music is not often associated with programmatic ideas. The use of this trill with the G pedal projects a very tranquil setting as if in the early hours of dawn at the countryside. The melody that follows gently descends case, all parts should be played legato. Return and three-part counterpoint. In the subsequent few bars, there are use of syncopations and tight notes in the other parts before the melody ascends again at bar 6 and 7 into the brighter key of B-flat major. Here at bar 7, the left hand takes over the trill. Throughout the prelude, the melodic interest is well distributed between both hands. At bar 9, a new turn figure arrives and that is treated with imitation in the two upper parts. suggest that in this instant, the left hand plays slightly detached for the quavers. At bar 11, darkness looms over for a moment, with the trill in the low register. In the subsequent bars, the musical ideas are treated with attentive voicing to all three parts. In the final bars, starting from bar 18, this marks the start of the coda. It eventually ends the prelude with assuredness in G minor on a tier Piccadilly.
the field begins with a two-bar subject announced by the auto voice. consists of two groups of short melodic ideas, both beginning on the offbeat. The first one, and the second. These ideas give the few an assertive character. The tempo should be moderately quick, almost impatient. The tonal answer is sung by the soprano, after the third beat in the second bar. And here we have the counter subject in the auto voice. Bringing it into D minor. The counter subject, of course, is derived from the subject. The subject then appears in the bass at bar 5. Before the tenor enters at bar 6. It is soon interrupted by the auto voice with the motif of the subject. With the end of the exposition at bar 8, an episode leads the fugue into a cadence of G minor into the middle section. The middle section makes a clear modulation to B flat major at bar 11. Entries of the subject soon appear, developing the middle section and reaches its climax at bar 18. The materials are developed further in mainly three part polyphony, with the subject entering in C minor at bar 20. Soprano voice at bar 21. So, what other features are there in this view? Yes, there are the episodes. Firstly, we saw an episode at bar 8 to 11. episode at bar 18 to 20. And the longest episode occurs at bar 24 to 28. The final section occurs at bar 28, with the entry of the soprano soon interjected by the tenor voice and the bass, creating a strato effect that intensifies the entire field. The corner texture in the final bars affirms the majestic character of this field. I would suggest the use of the tempo pedal to enhance the overall sonority. Contrast with the prelude, a firm touch is recommended for this view with slurred and detached notes for the subject. However, we should be aware that the moving semiquavers as well as the episodes should be given a lighter tone. On the whole, a sense of Germanic seriousness would be effective in delivering the overall effect of this view. Let us now hear the view. <laughs> 